Good evening everybody, welcome to this week's Making It Monday. Oh, I haven't got one of my Christmas lights on. That's a bit sad, isn't it? I'm going to turn it on. Hold on, I'm going to turn my Christmas light on. I can't be having that. There we go, that's better. A little bit more festive, a little bit more festive, sorry about that. Welcome to Making It Monday. I've got no clue what, what uh, number it is. 50 something 50 something of making it mondays um hello jar i'm just trying to load up my ipad it ran out of battery so it's it's currently loading up now because uh, i do like to see your comments i like to see what's happening out there in the world i also like to know any gossip you may have on my sunday socials i like to keep up with strictly <laughs> i don't think there's anything happening really on a monday that i need to keep up with but um, I'm just going to load up so I can make sure that we are all good. Let's, oh, an error occurred. Sometimes this likes me, sometimes it does not. I'll be honest, it looks like a does not sort of an evening, but I'll, uh, I'll try a couple of times and then if all else fails, I'll just, um, I'll just leave it. Um, so making it Monday we're making really really cute why is the name just left my head um I want to say Wilbur but that's not right that's not right Walter <laughs> I was thinking I know I know the word water is in there somewhere so Walter we have this evening for you this is Walter this is a hot water bottle cover it's quilt as you go um it's just absolutely gorgeous I'm going to take you through how to make your template piece. Um, I'm very pro making your own templates. I'll be something I'll often do over on my page. Uh, I'll make you, I'll make you, <laughs> I'll force you. No, I'll encourage you to make your own templates. And uh, tonight's no exception. We're going to make a template. I'm going to take you through it. If you hear rustling in the background, that is just my little elf helper. Um, she's working, bless her. So you know we are just gonna have to bear with her um that's the bread and butter of this operation so <laughs> oh lily lily i know i said you can you know make some noise but come on now <laughs> she's dropping things now thinking she can get away with it um right let's see if i can load this up i'll just try one more time if i can't oh walter's feeling it if i can't then um you know um, oh, I just got a text through from Jaden on here asking if he can have a snack. Um, he's literally just had his dinner. That is the ways of a 15 year old, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's lovely to see you. Sheila, Lynn, Fiona, Kath, Angela, Marion, Karen, Myra, Melba. Loads of you here. Good evening to you all. Super, super, super job. So, um... A back, little backstory to this pattern is not so long ago, actually it was probably this time last year, I would come in here before it was converted and it was it, it's a garage um, and I've had it converted to my studio but before it was converted I was still using it as my studio so it, obviously it was freezing freezing cold because it was a garage um, and I would come in here to do my lives with my hot water bottle not this one, this is the one mum's made, but my hot water bottle. And I would have it, I would tuck it down the back of my trousers <laughs> and I would then have it up the back of my top. And I would come in here with the heater at my feet and my hot water bottle up my back and do my lives uh, because it was so freezing in here. But now I've got the heater on, it's wonderfully nice and toasty, uh, but it's really nice to revisit um, a pattern that... I did in here when I needed it. <laughs> I'll often make things that I need for myself um, and this is no exception. Oh hello mum, mum's here. Hello mum. I hope you're okay. I'm wittering. <laughs> it's what I do. Um, so I've got Walter, I've got my orange juice, I've got my elf helper Lily. We're all set to go. My chair is incredibly creaky. Um, I will one day get some WD-40 instead of just talking about it all the time, but 
until that day arrives of me being organised, I'll just let you know. Right, so pattern. I haven't printed off the first page. Mum says don't bother, so I didn't. Um, you will need two and a half inch strips of assorted fabric for the front outer. So this is this fabric here. Um, now, Mum hasn't given you the exact measurement for the strips for a very sensible reason. Because you're drafting your own pattern for this, there's a good chance they're all going to be different sizes. You could also do this with a really small hot water bottle. You could do this with one of those really long hot water bottles. You probably want to put a zip in the back of that, though. You'd be no good having a little um, fold. I don't think you'd be able to get it in. But um, because you're drafting your own pattern, there is no point giving you the length of the strips. But you'll see how it's made up as we go along. Um, half a metre of fabric for the back outer and binding, half a metre of lining fabric, half a metre of wadding and matching thread. Um, Lils, kid, come on now. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, she's going to get fired in a minute, isn't she? Um, now, um, prepare the fabrics. I haven't done any of, I've prepared some fabric, but I haven't cut my strips yet. Um, so cut two pieces of binding, it says, first of all, which, okay, we'll get to that. But what we're going to do first of all is make the template. So this is the template piece. This is for, this is, I guess it's a standard size hot water bottle. Um, you know, just stack, that is a standard size hot water bottle. So this is the template piece. I'm going to take you through how to make that. I'm going to poke the camera down. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to poke the camera down and we'll just get cracking. Um, it is, it, it's not as um, technical as it sounds. Honestly, you're going to be absolutely fine. It's really nice and straightforward. And we're going to make a super, super duper project. And if I can move that there, I might be able to see... Um, Lots of you there, lovely. I'm just going to poke you down out there. <laughs> There's no clicking of buttons here, everybody. It's I'm. It's a manual. <laughs> it's, I should get two little ropes, shouldn't I, and pull the camera down. But it's a manual uh, situation that we get going on here, and that is that is what we do. Um, it's more or less straight, I think. There we go. Right. So to make our pattern piece, which is this. We need to start with an A3 piece of paper. Now, if you're making this for, you know, the smaller hot water bottles, you can get those really diddy ones. If you're making it for this, obviously, your size of paper is going to uh, reflect on the size of your hot water bottle. So, using an A3 piece of card or paper, or two A4 pieces taped together, draw around a hot water bottle with a permanent pen. So, let's get this hot water bottle out of here. Oh, there we go. She's giving it a dust. You know, they can get a bit dusty. It's actually meant to be yellow in colour. That's not gone, that colour. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it should look like, this, this particular one anyway. Um, right, so we're going to draw around this. And when she says she, I'm, I, I really must apologise. When I, I don't mean she. It's a bit rude to say she. And, but then I keep having to say mum. And I don't want to say Lizzie because she's not Lizzie to me, she's mum. Um, often I'd say the old dear, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that's appropriate either. So I'm just going to say mum. Um, so mum has said, draw around this, and it is right, if you refer to your pattern here, um, it is close all the way around. It's not leaving an edge, so just all the way around. Okay. Oops, dropped my phone case. Um, right, so we're going to draw around this all the way around the outside and I'm going to have to just stand up to do the top I mean that I've given <laughs> that's very interesting there we go let's try that again there yeah, that's better okay <laughs> that's made me giggle I don't know what don't know quite what I was doing there um then we're going to add one and a half inches all around the drawn image. I, to be honest, I don't really have an inch and a half here. 
um because i didn't push it quite far enough up the template but it's fine um no it's not going to be on youtube I, d I can't stream on youtube um so we're going to um add all the way around uh mum measured so you can take your ruler and you can just do little dots all the way around the outside of where one and a half inches is like so and around the bend just one and a half inches yeah i, de I definitely don't have one and a half inches there <laughs> oh dear. Funny. um so just doing one and a half inches all the way around the edge like so there we are and the reason why we're doing one and a half inches is because um when you do quilt as you go it's good to have your piece um a bit larger than what you actually want to end up with i really love quilt as you go i really really do um, that's an interesting angle to put that there. Um, so then um, mum's measured them and um, uh, uh, draw all the way around. So we'll draw all the way around. Obviously mine is not going to be quite accurate because I've got a, a dodgy edge. But you get the idea, you'll get the idea from this. Okay, so that'll do. You could have that less curved. You could have it straighter if you wanted to, but we're fine. Um, so um, you could, if you wanted to, just draw half of this because you're going to fold it in half and cut it out. Um, but, you know, you might as well just draw around the outside. So we're going to find the centre of the template, fold it in half lengthways and cut it out. So cutting it out on this line. OK, so I need to find my paper scissors, which are here. And we're just going to fold it in half. Now, I'll be honest with you, you could measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm just going to roughly eyeball it. There we go. And then I'm going to cut this out along the um, along the outside edge. So this is quite a thick card. So just bear with me while I cut this out. I'm going to try and go a bit quicker because we've still got to make the got to make the project up. There we go. There we go. I don't think that's probably too shabby. OK, and then we've got all these markings on here. So just flip it over and then you've got a lovely uh, plain, um, a lovely plain template to work with. So we're going to find the centre point of this. So um, just simply we'll fold it in half again. And here's my centre point. Just there. Here's my centre point. So from the centre point, we're going to measure up one and a half inches. So to there. And then we're going to measure down one and a half inches to there. Now, this is your line for your bottom section. So your bottom section is going to be this section. Um, Agatha says, don't have a hot water bottle. Then this isn't the project for you, Agatha, I wouldn't say. Um, or go and buy a hot water bottle. They're very cheap. Go to the pound shop. Um, so we're going to draw a line across. Now, there are two different lines on this template. Let me bring it in to show you. There's two different lines. You've got the dotted line, which goes along here, up, round and down to here. And then you've got the, um, the dashed line the other part of the Morse code, uh, which starts along here and goes around the bottom section here. So I'll draw that on for you so you can see. I'm just going to turn this round. So the first line, which is the top line, so the line nearest the top, this is going to be our dashed line. And we are just going to 
what we're doing is we're just distinguishing between the two lines. We want to make it obvious to ourselves which section is which. So dashed line, dashed line. The line below that, so this, the other one and a half inch mark, we're going to draw a dotted line. So again, just using my ruler. I'm just, <laughs> there's me trying to go quick and actually I'm just making a, a mess of it. So using our ruler, doing our dotted line. There we go. So that dotted line, we take up to the top. OK, so all the way around the outside. So the dotted line goes around the outside like so. So this is one section. So if you've ever um, done dressmaking and you've transferred a, a paper pattern, you'll be familiar with um, different lines for different parts of the pattern. And then from your dashed line, we're just going to draw our dashes. And this is just to distinguish this part of the pattern. Okay. So it doesn't matter if they're straight. It doesn't matter how close they are to the edge. It's literally for your reference. And then you've got yourself a lovely pattern piece. Okay, lovely pattern piece. So... Let's just oh, oh. so that's our pattern piece now all prepared and I'm hoping that that's quite obvious which section is which. So you've got the bottom section dashed line and the top section, which is the dotted line. So your template piece now is all prepared and we can get on doing our stitching. I'm going to have to clear some space. Here we go. I'm going to have to roll my sleeves up as well. I always roll my sleeves up when I'm stitching. There we go. Right. So. We've done this. We're now going to cut a rectangle from wadding and lining, at least one inch bigger than the template. We're going to then adhere the wadding to the wrong side of the lining. I'm going to use the template that mum gave me because, as you know, mine wasn't quite long enough. So I'll just, I'll just bin that one off. <laughs> so I'll just do that again. Uh, cut a rectangle from the wadding and lining, at least one inch bigger than the template. So um, for lining, that's going to be on the inside of our um, hot water bottle cover. Oopsies, there we go. Oopsies, there we go. Dropping everything everywhere. So I've got a, yes, I've got a piece of wadding. This piece of wadding has got a little bit of fabric in the centre because I've actually joined two scrap pieces together. This is such a great um, way of using up scrap bits of um, wadding. It's just by using a zigzag stitch. You butt them together on the sewing machine, then zigzag over, and then you've got a bigger piece of wadding. Um, so that's fab. So we're going to uh, join these together. Does that say that? Adhere the wadding to the wrong side of the lining. Yes. So the wrong side of lining is this way around. And I always spray, I use uh, June Taylor Quilt Basting Spray. Um, it's my favourite. I find it just works perfectly. I'm not so keen on the latest one, which is, it looks like this. Looks like that with the dark blue because it's really heavily scented. Um, and I guess that's good because it lets you know, you know, to open your, your windows and your doors. This one has no scent, so I guess... This is the older one, so I guess they had to add the scent. Uh, I have to say it's very, it's a bit too strong for me. But I guess it's for safety reasons, so I understand why. So I'm going to spray my wadding with my June Taylor spray. Other sprays are available, but June Taylor is the one I recommend. And then I'm just going to pop that down onto my lining. Press it out and that really does sandwich well really does sandwich well look at that it adheres really nicely and I'll just I'll just use my hands to flatten that out a bit bit of a crease there so I'll just give it a little press because when we quilt this with our strips that will you know will stitch over that and that's not really what we want to do so I'll just let my iron heat up. While my iron's heating up, I'll cut my strips. I'm going to be using just two colours this evening. These two beautiful colours. And I'm going to cut myself some two and a half inch strips, which conveniently is the size of this ruler. <laughs> so 
I'll probably just cut it like this because it's fairly well. Oh, I've got to just lift my chair up. There we go. Oh. So I'm just going to start while my iron's heating up. I'm just going to cut myself some strips. I'm not bothered about the selvage because that's I'm not going to stitch that. That's going to be coming off my project. I'm not not bothered about that. But uh, obviously, if you are trim your selvage off first and then cut yourself some strips. I have no idea how many I need, so I'm just going to cut the whole piece. There we go. Are we all okay? Yeah, we're okay. I think we're okay. Lily's okay. You can hear her. <laughs> right, other, other strips. I'm not going to tell her to stop the game. It's very important. Very important jobs. Right. Hi, Cindy. Nice to see you. So we're nearly there. Yeah, you could use fusible fleece, yeah. Yeah, mum's got her feet up. Not not too shabby, mum, not too shabby. Now I'm I'm to be fair, I'm probably gonna be fairly wasteful with this fabric, but I do have a lot of it spare and um you know i'm doing a facebook live if, if you're at home then you might not want to cut so many pieces okay i'm going to bring back my wadding i'm just going to give that uh, lining just that bit there a little bit of a press to get rid of that fold you totally don't need to do this step but it just it does make it a lot neater when you flip it over and you've quilted it not that you'll see because it'll be inside, but you know, we like things to be neat. We're like, well, I don't. <laughs> Mum does. Mum likes things to be neat, so we'll, we'll, we'll play neat. Right. Try and roll my sleeves up again. So we've done this. Uh, do not cut around the template yet. We're going to use the quilt as you go using our fabric strips. So what we're going to do is come over to the back to the wadding side just take off these bits of thread this is the wadding side up now so we've got lining fabric and the wadding and this is wadding side up and we're going to start putting our strips on you always always with quilt as you go start with your first fabric right side up so if i get some scissors this will be my first piece you always always start right side up so your first piece in the corner you can go diagonal like this you can go straight like this you could put a square in the center and work your way out of the square if you wanted to a bit like a log cabin entirely up to you but the first fabric always goes right side up your second fabric whoop, I'm going to trim this will then go on top of that right sides together okay so i'm going to put, pop a pin in there like so and i'm going to stint stinch <laughs> i'm going to stitch along this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then i'm going to flip it back um I, i'll be honest with you i never ever use my iron when i'm quilting as you go because i don't want to move this wadding i don't want to warp it in any way so you could use your roller. So if you've got a roller like this, you could use that. Or you could just use the heat from your hands and finger press it out. Right, I've just got to clear a bit of space. I don't have the biggest table here. <laughs> so I'm just working in a smaller space than you're probably used to when you watch my mum. And I'm going to move you over here. Bear with me while I lift this up a bit. There we go. I'm going to just try and do it in this area here. So you can, there's my iPad. I'm just trying to keep my eye on the comments. Lily, darling, would you just turn that heater off, please? It's very warm. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so I'm just going to stitch this using a quarter inch seam allowance. You can, if you want to, do whatever seam allowance you like. You're just going to, if you do, go bigger, you're just going to end up with, 
you know, just using a few more strips. I mean, it doesn't it really doesn't matter. So let's stitch that down. So that's our first strip. Pop that down on the mat here. Take out our pin. Now, for quarters you go, I'll be honest, I, I just use one pin constantly. Um, I just, I just do. So we fold this back, and I've done a lot of quilt as you go. Fold this back, and we can just use the heat of our hands to fold that strip back. Just glorious, glorious colours, just absolutely glorious. So our next strip is going to go on top here. And it's always a good idea to lay your strip on before you cut it. Fold it back and make sure that it covers the ends. It can be a little deceptive sometimes when you're doing it like this. So just fold it back, make sure it's covering everything. Again, I'm being, you know, overzealous with my strips, but as I say, I'm on a Facebook Live and I do what I can do. <laughs> so stitch this one down. It's moving a little bit, so I'll just give a little wiggle. Push you there for a second, I'm back. Did anybody watch an audience with Adele last night? It was quite super, absolutely super. She's, I mean, she's incredible, isn't she? I was trying to do a bit of car singing today and I just thought to myself, why bother? <laughs> why bother after you've watched an audience with Adele? I'm really not going on much of an angle here. I could have angled this a lot better. But uh, it's gonna, I think it's going to end up fairly straight. <laughs> yeah, she's just incredible, isn't she? Oh, whoopsies, we've just lost a light. Hold on, bear with me a second. We just had a bit of a, a bit of a catastrophe. All my own doing, I would, I will say. Sorry everyone, bear with me a second. I shall just leave that there. I don't know how that's gone off, but we'll just have to... Oh, there it is. There it is. Bear with me. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, so did you see Alan Carr when he had to go on the stage? Oh! I laughed and laughed and laughed. In fact, I've watched it a couple of times because it's just so funny. He's just so hilarious. Can you imagine doing that to a friend? Just going, oh, do you mind? Actually, <laughs> I say, can you imagine doing that? I've done that to Lily so many times. I'm like, Lily, just sit here for a minute and wave to everyone while I get something. Honestly, I've done it so many times and bless her, she does. She sits here and I say, talk to everyone. She goes, hello. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you get. Hello. Yeah, brilliant. Well done, Lils. So, yes, I can imagine doing that to a friend. I say friend. Lily's my daughter. If you don't know, Lily's my daughter. She comes and keeps me company in here. Um, and sometimes has been left in the deep end. I'm just cracking on with this now. You've seen what to do, and I'm just conscious that time is really ticking along. Um, so I'm just cracking on. There's nothing new here. I'm just doing my strips. Lovely, lovely colours. It's making me really happy. Okay. Next strip. A little known fact about me is when I'm working in here by myself is I like to watch action films. And what I've realised today is, actually, 
watching action films is really counterintuitive because they don't really say much when the action's going on. So you actually really don't know what's happening. Whereas if you watch like a comedy and it's a lot of um, talking, it's a lot more entertaining. <laughs> and that only dawned on me today because I was watching The Born Identity and it got halfway through and I really didn't know what was happening. I mean, I have seen it several times before, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But I like to have something on. I don't know about you, but I like to have some some noise on. I think it comes from having, you know, all these kids. <laughs> all these kids and a rowdy husband. I have to have noise. And, uh, yeah, I realised today that action films probably wasn't the best thing to do. I'll, I'll revert back to um, my favourite Schitt's Creek at one point. I will. Because it's so fabulous. So I made one of these um, hot water bottle covers for David's gran. I made it in uh, cat theme fabric for her so that when she goes out and about in, on her wheelchair she can have it on her lap. Um, and I made my, I made a red one for myself, uh, red with my autumn leaf fabric on, which I just absolutely adore. And to be honest, Seb did pinch that for a while. Um, but I did get it back only recently and then I couldn't find where I put it, which is about typical, isn't it? Right, we're getting near the end of the piece, thank, thankfully. <laughs> there we go. So nearly there with this. I, I be honest, I have watched a couple of Christmas films. I do love a Christmas film. I'm saving Elf. I really love Elf. And there's a new Christmas film on Friday on Sky, um, A Boy Named Christmas, and I'm really looking forward to that. Last year, it was the um, Christmas Chronicles 2 that came out at this time, um, because it's really, it was released on my birthday. So for my birthday, I insisted that we watch The Christmas Chronicles. Um, it's not my birthday today. I'm just saying it was at this time. Right, getting there, getting there, getting there. The problem is, if I go too fast, then I'll mess it up. I'll probably end up putting two of the same colour together. So close. Yes, that is a good film. Well, I loved the first one, and then the second one came out and had to watch that. It's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Right, I can get away, I think, with this smaller strip here. Yes, I can. Oh, Dirty Dancing, I love that film. Love that. That made an interesting sound, Lily. <laughs> Lily would like you to know that was the packaging and not Lily. Okay, and one last piece for the corner there. One last bit of yellow. My trusty pin. There. Beautiful. Good 
this stuff. Okie dokie. Let's move you around here. I'm going to have to move this iPad. Right, so this is our piece. We're going to, I mean, you can trim this down if you want to. I'll be totally honest with you. I'm not going to bother because I'm going to cut it, my template out. So it can be, you can cut this to the size of your backing piece, of course. Um, I'm, I'm not going to bother. Just wasted time, just wasted time. So we're going to lay the template on top, which I've thrown over here. So I'll just grab that. Lay the template on top. That looks pretty good. Um, you can pin this or you can temporarily stick it in place. It's up to you. Um, we are going to cut around this ready to attach the back pieces. Um, you can use scissors. You can draw around it. I'm going to use my rotary cutter for speed. Just around that bit there. It's quite thick, so I'll revert to my scissors. So if you want to stick it down, by all means do so. If you want to pin it down, again, go for it a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back works wonders make sure that's not moving no it's not moving we're okay oops it has moved slightly there i'll just give it a little press it's got a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back i'll just pop a little bit more on too much on because it's on the front side of your fabric if you want to go to town with a temporary adhesive then you can put your pattern piece on the reverse and cut that way okay slow and steady wins the race and all that yeah. okay so we've got a lovely, lovely piece. Look at that, gorgeous. And then the reverse is obviously quilted, yeah? Lovely, just absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna pop this to one side now and then we're going to work on the, the back pieces. So we want to, um, temp we're gonna fold the template, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is fold for this bottom section here. So remember, your dashed line is the bottom section. So you're going to fold this. You are not going to cut this template. You're going to simply fold it along that line, okay? And that is your one of your pattern pieces for the reverse. Um, you're going to place this onto one layered back piece and cut around the template. Now, by layered back piece, what it is, is you want some lining fabric, which is the same as what you've already used. Which way up? That way up. <laughs> see the wood for the trees then i don't think i'll be able to get the other one on here as well no um you need some wadding which is obviously going to go i can't see which way around that goes which is going to go on here so we're going to spray our wadding beautiful and then you want your backing fabric so the fabric that's going to go on the reverse so let me bring up the um the hot water bottle to show you so this is our backing fabric so you want to have your lining which in in this one is the checked you want your batting so your wadding whatever that might be and then you want your reverse fabric so the fabric for the back of the project um, I'm going to use this this is a fat quarter. It's probably not going to be enough, but what I'm going to do is just check. Oh, actually, I think it will be enough. One, that's that piece. And then if I fold this piece this way, so just ignore me. Yes, it's going to fit. So that's absolutely, <laughs> it's glorious. Um, I'm just going to roughly cut this out so that I've got the fabric for the other end 
Right, glorious, glorious. So then we're going to spray our wadding again and pop our outer fabric onto that wadding. Lovely, glorious. Now do think about it, if it's directional fabric, obviously what my other piece is going to go the other way and I don't care about that at all. Um, if you care about that, then think about directional fabric and how you're going to lay your pieces. Um, so we folded the template over, we've placed it onto one layered back piece and cut around the template. Do not cut the template, it's, 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 I'll speak actual words in a second. Do not cut the template itself. Does that make sense? Yes. So around the bottom section. Mind out the way, June. There we go. You could use your rotary cutter and ruler for this if you didn't want to be so, you know, uh, jolly with your scissors. These are some fabulous scissors, though, I have to say. So it does make light work of it. Oh, I've just... <laughs> do not cut the template and I cut the corner off. Who's going to tell Mum? Nobody. Shh, nobody tell her. So that's one section. Okay, so pop that to one side. And then we're going to do the second section. So we get our lining fabric again. I've got lots of scrap bits of lining fabric here. So we get our lining fabric again. Yeah, that's the right way up. Then we're going to open our template and then we're going to fold along the dotted line. So then we've got our top section. So you see now when I put this together, you can see that we've got a nice flap that's going to, um, you know, sit over the back of the, uh, the piece. So that's that's where you've got your overlap of three inches. So we've got our lining fabric. Let's just make sure that fits. Yes, it does. We've got our wadding. This is another piece that I've I've stitched and I'll just spray my wadding or spray your wadding. Spray my wadding. Nice, nice, nice. And then my outer fabric. Now I wonder if I can get it the same way. Which is the same way? So if I've got it that way up. Uh, that's the, the right way. So I wonder if I can. Oh, do you know I can? <laughs> I can, I can. That's me going, I don't care about directional. And I honestly don't. But I think that you would like to see it done directionally. So spray the wadding out of fabric. I'm using fairly large pieces. Um, these are the Soline gold um, scissors. They're very fabulous. So template... And then I'm just going to hold that template still. My, June, mind out the way. Come on, girl. There you go. That June, always getting in the way. Honestly, I feel like they should be paying me at this stage to talk about June Taylor. Talk about it so much. I just really like the spray. And just for reference, I am not getting paid to talk about June Taylor. However, if they would like to pay me, I am available to be paid. <laughs> can you imagine if someone went, can I pay you to talk about this? No, I don't think so. But like, sure, is it good? That would be my first question though. Is it any good? Because I'm not going to talk about it if it's rubbish. Right, so that's the top bit. I'm just going to trim this. Okay, then we've got our two back pieces. Yeah, we've done that, we've done that. So now we need our two binding pieces. Remember at the beginning we spoke about binding. If you go back to the first page, when it says prepare the fabrics, it says cut two pieces of binding from the back outer fabric, two and a half inch wide, by the width of the cover. So now I know the width of my cover, I can do my binding. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going to use this yellow, because I've already cut the strip. And I think it will just look glorious. So pressing that. And we're going to press this strip wrong sides together. And we're going to stitch this, um, machine stitch this on the reverse 
on the lining side of our hot water bottle cover so that we can stitch it, we can flip it over and we can machine stitch it at the front. Um, it just, that's just a nicer way of doing machine binding. I tend to avoid binding, uh, stitching my binding down with my machine, but doing it this way, you, you do have control over where that stitch line is going to sit because I really don't like to see a bulky stitch line but you do you whatever works for you no judgments here so get some quilting clips which I've got a few of as you know and I'm going to pop this on the reverse along the back here and we're just looking for it to be the same length we're not looking to um, have this tucked around or anything like that so it can go just straight edge and I'll just give myself a little bit at either end uh, just in case I go wrong somewhere which is you know highly likely so that's one and then I'll do the other side so binding side attach this on with some quilting clips there we go and then I'm just going to stitch that down using my normal stitch length which is for me on this machine uh, 2.5 so let's turn that down to 2.5 just move you round iPad's died a death so we'll just pop that on the floor so we're just going to stitch this down quarter an inch just remove the quilting clips as we go new machine for this because it's got a lovely patchwork foot on it that just crushes everything down it's quite wonderful so taking that binding now we're just going to flip it over to the front and you can press that if you want to to you know to help you um, have a nice straight edge you can press it press the rest of it Oh, Lily, you are noisy. <laughs> and then just get your quilting clips and just quilt this. Uh, sorry, just clip this round. And then the second one. And you're covering that, Roy. I won't bother pressing this one. I have no idea what the time is, but I can't help. Oh, yes, I do. No, I don't. My clock says it's five past six. <laughs> what time is it, Lils? Um, what? Okay, okay, we're getting there. And then I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm going to stitch long here. You could do a fancy stitch if you like. You could do a zigzag. You could do a beautiful embroidery. You could do all sorts. But I'm just going to take it to the machine and I'm just going to come in by about, um, about an eighth of an inch and just stitch along that edge. So it secures that binding down and gives you a really nice finish. That will really look nice. And then I'll trim off the binding at the ends. You see how lovely that looks? Really nice professional finish. Trim off the binding. I haven't done anything apart from what I was already doing. So you haven't missed anything, promise. I'll just attach this up here and see if I can just just mind my hand for a second. Sorry, there we go. Just plugged you in. So hopefully I won't lose you again. There we go. Right, so I'm going to trim these ends just so that they're the same. There we go. It's just when my camera runs out of battery, but it gets a 20% tip pings up on the screen which then stops the live for a second okay so 
So we've done that. There are our two pieces looking lovely and professional. You could quilt these if you wanted to. Um, you go ahead and do some stipple quilting on there. You could do whatever you want. Um, but for the purpose of this and for the purpose of time, we will not be. So we're going to lay down the upper piece and then the lower piece onto the front panel as shown. So let's bring in the outer panel, the front panel. Isn't that just glorious? It's glorious. So we're going to do right sides together. So the first piece you want to do is the top piece. So top piece on first. And then you want your bottom piece. And you want to make sure that it's lining facing up. So you've got lining at the back lining at the front which means you've got right sides together pin or clip the pieces together and sew three eighths an inch all the way around and then we're going to finish with a zigzag now i quite like to do a fairly close zigzag um, because i think it gives a nicer finish you could use your overlocker um, that's the effect that we're going for but because we're on a live and doing a really close zigzag would take a I mean it wouldn't take a fair amount of time but it would take longer than what we've got I will just do um, a larger stitch but I like a close um, zigzag because it just gives a nice finish so let's pin this and if for any reason you haven't been very accurate with your cutting like on here you can see I've got a little bit of the outer sticking out there what I'll do is I'll just trim that down because when I come to stitch, I want to make sure that I'm catching all those layers. And the best way to do that is just making sure they're the same. So that'll be fine. Just this edge on this side. Just trim that edge down slightly. You'll be able to do a lot more accurate cutting. So now I'm going to stitch around the entire piece because obviously we've got this flap here for turning. So I'm just going to stitch around the entire piece, three eighths of an inch. Um, again, depending on how big you've made this and how big your water bottle is, you might want to do whatever stitch you want. I'm going to start about an inch and a half up from where my um, flap is because I want a good seal on there. You can do a start and stop or a back stitch there, but I'm just going to um, come round to there so I'm not bothered. I've just got to mind these cables. <laughs> Lily, darling, can you do me a favour? Can you hold this power box still while I stitch? Because I'm going to push it off with the hot water bottle cover. Just pop your hand on it. Nothing sharp's going to come your way, I promise. But it's just so that it doesn't push this off. <laughs> in very useful if I said that to Jade and he'd have gone what power bank where is it well why is your fabric going to push it off yeah but can't you move it that would have been Jade whereas Lily comes over puts her hand on it realises that it's then fine and then wanders off you know Although, Jaden, I have to say, the uh, boy's done good. He's had his mocks, his mock exams the last three weeks. I mean, utterly horrendous, isn't it? But he got his um, maths mock back today. And in old, in old grading, which is what I go by, because this numbers system they've got now, I can't fathom it for the life of me. Um, he's come out with a B, a B for his maths. Really? Yep, so I'm really pleased with him. That's a six. Right, I'm just going to go over my stitches a little bit there. There we go. So yeah, I'm really, really uh, proud of him. 
So I'm going to switch to a zigzag. Now, with my zigzags, I don't know about you, but I always, always test my zigzag because I'm never quite sure what size I've got on. That's far too small, so let's just make that bigger. Come on, don't be shy. That's... No. Hold on, gang. That's a bit too big. Okay, that'll do. So my stitch, I've got my zigzag on 5.5 and I've got the stitch length at 2. But again, I would prefer it if you would do that a bit... Um, you know, the length's fine. I just prefer it if you would stitch it, a, the, have the stitches a little closer together uh, because it would it will make a nice finish because essentially you're just overlocking these raw edges, which means you can do that lovely quilt as you go technique. So I'm going to start three quarters of the way down here and I'm just going to start zigzagging. Oh, Lils, can you come and hold this again for me? Oh, don't worry, I'm just going to move. I'm just going to move the machine. I'm just going to move the machine here. Don't worry. So you're looking to go the other side of the line that you've stitched. You don't want to go into that line because that is your nice, neat line. But when you fold round, in the new year, I'm going to get a really big table. So I'm going to have all the space. And I'm going to take over David's side of the garage. I have told him. Right, nearly done nearly done which is good because I can see my bobbin and it's very near um, running out it does make a difference doing the zigzag it does give it that just finished look I think Okay, snip, bring you back to here, look at, all, look at my rubbish, <laughs> just move that out of the way. Uh, uh, knock through the wall, no I'm not going to knock through the wall, I'm going to have the other section as purely a filming section. So I'm going to keep the door this side and then I'm going to have all of that side purely for filming, so a big table, lights, nice background of course um and then i can keep the door for in here for all of my gubbins i didn't show you that but you can sort of see that it looks nice and then i'm just going to flip it round fold it out get my hands in those corners <laughs> kath says i need david's side of the garage <laughs> well i'm willing to take lodgers <laughs> no I'm not I've got three of those already they go by the name of Jaden, Lily and Sib <laughs> right I'm just going to push out these edges I haven't quite caught that top bit but it's fine it's absolutely fine might just go back and catch that after just haven't quite caught the top but I'm just going to fold it over and pretend I have there we go. So there's our hot water bottle cover. There's the back. I'll get my hot water bottle. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Is it on the floor? Yes, of course it is. So, oh, I'll bring in mums. So you can see two hot water bottle covers. Pop this in here. Actually, um, Yeah, I mean, I quite like the, the underneath, um, but it's good to have this one so you can slot it in the top. Do you see? I'm just, just going to slot it in the top and then take the bottom, 
fold it in. I mean, you do have plenty of room to manoeuvre, so obviously it's going to have water in it, and you're not going to be able to fold it like that. But honestly, it's got once it's full and you can't fold uh, push it around like that, you're still going to be able to get it in. As it's plenty big enough for a hot water bottle. So there you go. There's the hot water bottle cover. There's the back. That's, the back's my favourite, actually. Right, I'm just going to move the camera up very technically like that <laughs> and then I'm just gonna move my chair down like that oh you can see how warm it is now you can see it's so warm in here but there we go so I've just got to catch the, I've just got to catch that little bit I'll just pop a clip in it while we're sitting here so I don't forget so just got to ca uh, catch that but the, so that's a quilted hot water bottle that is Walter Walter yes Walter that's the back. I prefer the back. <laughs> but there we go. Lovely and straightforward. As I say, you can do whatever you want on the front. You could put an applique of someone's initial. You could do this in superhero fabric if it's for a child. You could do this, um, you know, maybe it's for a, a fisherman and you could do this with some fish on it. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? It's a nice fish. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see your walters in the group obviously it's as mum said on the pattern it's a little bit more involved this one because you're drafting your own pattern but i'm hoping that you'll give it a go um and i'm hoping that you'll post some pictures in the group um and we'll just make sure that yes i didn't follow the pattern at the end there i was just getting on with it <laughs> just making sure that i've done it right yes i have um so thank you very much for joining me. Um, Mum will be back. Um, normal service will res resume next week. Do feel free to head over and like my page if you'd like. Um, I have linked it in the description of the video. Um, you're not obliged to. Uh, but uh, we'd love to see you over there. Mum will be back next week with Making It Monday number 852. Um, <laughs> and I think I'm covering again... Um, I'd love to tell you when that is, but I can't remember. Oh, I do know. I can't tell you. I, I do know-ish. I don't know exactly. Uh, right. Thanks, everyone. I will see you when I am substitute teacher again, which will be at some point in the new year. Um, so Merry Christmas to you. I know it's a bit early, but I won't see you on this page before Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you and uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> It feels a bit random saying that, doesn't it? Uh, thanks, everyone. Signing off. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>